right, welcome back to the On Fire Show. I'm the host, Daryl McCall Brooks, and I'm here with uh, a good guest, uh, Steve Martino. Nice to meet you. Nice Thanks to for having me on. Oh, I'm glad. And you know, I'm here, but you're here because you want to talk about your book, The Hidden Reality. Correct. And it's so important because there is a definitely hidden reality that we have right here in America. Exactly. And so, you know, tell us about your book. Well, my book is actually about what's happening today, but it's set in the future. Oh, wow. Everything that you see today with the rise of big government, increased taxes, out of control spending, a government that's doing whatever they want, they want, and a government that can do whatever they want with no responsibility. Imagine that taken globally. And it forewarns what will happen to this country and the world if it goes in the path that's going on right now. Just add one, for one example, think of the, the Trans-Pacific, the TTP. Yes. You think of that trade agreement. Mm -hmm. If that goes in effect, do you, 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 you know who, who's actually going to be running our country, basically? What happens is you have a Trans-Pacific Commission, mm -hmm. and the people who run the Trans-Pacific Commission are international bankers and businessmen. Mm -hmm. And in the TTP documentation, basically, it says, Whatever they say can overrule every living document. And guess what living document we have here in America? The Constitution. The Constitution. The Constitution. So you're talking about people like George Soros. The George Soros. Soros. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so that's what it shows. Mm -hmm. That's what it forewarns. Mm -hmm. And it seems so so pertinent to today. Just like when we saw George Soros break the Bank of uh, England. The Bank of England. And we see his, his son now dealing with the Hillary Clinton campaign. They're influencing it. Yeah. Money has power. And we, could, we already saw what, what happened with Hillary Clinton, mm -hmm. with the Clinton Cash, that book, and the movie that's come out, yeah. how this simple little money can in, influence politics. And, and how she's a, a Wall Street president. You know, a Wall Street, you know, she's, mm -hmm. uh, all, all our money came from Wall Street. I mean, if you want to look at uh, uh, what the uh, individuals are talking about her, you know, running against her, and, uh, you know, it's, 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 you know, where's your money coming from? It's right. Wall Street. Right. You know, and uh, Sanders said the same thing, you know. <laughs> so, I know. You know, it was, it was, it was, you know. We have Wall Street government. And when you look at, the, you know, Wall Street, who's behind, who's really running this country. And, uh, you, know, I, you know, I know that some of our, uh, our, our listeners uh, can really understand what's really happening to our country and to the world. And, you know, tell me how you get started on the book. Well, I've always had an interest in history. Mm -hmm. I've always had an interest in politics. So actually, I started thinking about this book during my early days in college. It's about 25 years ago. I was taking a course on Alexander the Great. And not that I wasn't listening, but I was more daydreaming than actually taking notes. And I said, what, what if a book part of it was set 2,500 years ago in, 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 ancient, uh, in, in ancient Greece? How would that be? How would the history be? How does it apply to today, and how would it apply to the future? So I've been thinking of this book now for 25 years. I tried to take the reader from 2,500 years ago to about 60 years in the future, all in one book, and try to combine it and make it flow evenly. So if you like history, it's good for you, especially ancient Greece, Alexander the Great. And if you like futuristic science uh, and modern politics, this book combines it all in one. Yeah. And, and as, you know, your book talk about, you know, it seems like the, the world is on fire. And you look at what's happening right now in the world, it's, it's definitely on fire, especially this country. Now, in your book, you know, what can challenge this system as a, as a people? You know, we have the, you know, you have the Occupy movements and you have the Tea Party movements. Is, do you see a movement that could would challenge the system to, you know, because we, as, you know, as people believe in the Constitution. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's something uh, that it's, it's so different than, you know, when you talk about your book, 20, 30, 40 years down the line, it's what, what America will be like and what the world will be like. And right. I mean, you talk about the progressive, on a show we talk about the progressiveness mm -hmm. and the leaders that are trying to change America, but change the world. Right. I, I call them regressives. Mm -hmm. Their ideas have been around for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. And it actually goes back... The Woodrow Wilson years. Yeah. It's been yeah. a long... Before long that, yeah. But there is a movement, and yeah. I'll give you one word for it, Brexit. Mm -hmm. the, the only way to do it is we the people. We the people has to go down to our local governments, our churches, our families. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what build our country. Family values, mm -hmm. cohesive family, uh, belief in church, belief in God, belief in the morals that built this country. Yes. And that, that's that's what the founders had. They had they had uh, virtue, 
And if you believe in uh, the, the virtuousness that went into the Constitution, you, you understand how, how it's been surviving, how the America became the greatest country in the world. Mm -hmm. And also, in We the People, we saw that work in Britain. Yeah. Well, you know, they got out of the EU, which was basically, you know, sucking them dry financially. And, you know. Yeah, you know, you know one of the things that you talk about uh, that's always been talked about, if you look on the internet, uh, talk about the New World Order. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how that's, you know, set in place. Your book goes into that. Correct. Yeah. Tell yeah. us about that. Well, the New World Order, we, we, there's been theories about this for even a longer period of time. They actually bring the New World Order back to the Illuminati movement back in the 18th century. Mm -hmm. What the New World Order does, it's, it's almost like that fifth wall, the party of Davos, uh, the Bilderberg Group. Uh, these are the people that, that the, the shadow government that, that controls everything. And with such agreements as TTP, the EU, uh, the businessmen of the world, the, the bankers of the world are, are basically controlling everything. I mean, just look. I mean, this, I, I, I live in New Jersey. Just look down every street. What comes up? A new bank. I, I'm stumbling into a new bank every day. Um, and w especially with George Soros now, with such influence, we've seen what he's done in countries all across of Europe, what he's doing here, here to America. And with his philosophy, he has an open, open society philosophy, where basically he believes that every person ha ha believes is equal to the next. So if I, I say, my belief is in the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. uh, I, thou shalt not kill. If your belief is in killing everyone, we're equal. Yeah. You know, he wants to break down religion. Mm -hmm. He wants to break down family. He wants to break down borders. That's the open society. Okay, well, we've got to go to a station break. We'll be right back. This is the On Fire Show. We'll be right back. Apple Ridge is about freedom. Apple Ridge is about community. Apple Ridge is about home. Apple Ridge, everything you want, more than you expect. Welcome to your new neighborhood. Apple Ridge Senior Living. Enjoy a maintenance-free, affordable luxury lifestyle today. Visit AppleRidgeSeniorLiving.com and find out more about the Apple Ridge experience. When we make Beyond Natural Dry Dog and Cat Foods, we start with real meat as the first ingredient. We leave out corn, wheat, and soy. And we own where our dry food is made, 100%. Can other brands say all that? For nutrition you can trust and your pet will enjoy. Does your food go beyond? Learn more at PurinaBeyond.com. Step into an extraordinary world that will excite your senses. Experience our delectable Mughlai cuisine and the magic of tandoori savoir faire. Let our international award-winning team delight you with a taste of heaven. Enjoy our mouth-watering flavors and our unique flair for excellence. Savor the elegance of fine dining and catering. Shazam Restaurant. Indulge your taste buds. Hi, back with the On Fire Show. I'm your host, Daryl McHale Brooks, and I'm here with uh, a man. How you doing, Steve? Good. Good, thanks to be back with you again. Okay, now, now tell me about this book and who's your, some of your favorite characters in the book. Well, my favorite character is a guy named Alex Pella. He, he, he's like a mad scientist, but a brilliant man. Thinks one step ahead of everyone, is always there with the next best invention. What I try to do in my book is take all the mo modern science that we have and try to extrapolate it, what, how it would be in the next 60 years. And I make him, he's, he, he's a neuroscientist, figure out these things and almost like the, the, the futuristic MacGyver. Mm -hmm. In my trainings in medicine, I'm a neurologist, so I try to put a lot of medical in information into it. I try to put a lot of uh, scientific information, but try to make it interesting and not like you're reading some textbook or, or magazine that will put you to sleep. Mm -hmm. now, now tell me about, uh, you know, I'm sure you definitely study history. And, you know, we talk about the New World Order. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, the progressives do, especially our past progressive presidents, uh, Woodrow Wilson and the, the League of Nations. Right. And, and, you know, that was sort of similar to what you, were, you talk about in your book. 
how progressive politicians should lead the nation. It's the, the Federal Reserve. Exactly. Uh, the IRS, the progressive taxes, you know, uh, the Treaty of Versailles that mm -hmm. led to Hitler. I mean, all oh, these yeah. different things that Woodrow Wilson did as president of the United States and he allowed uh, prohibition. You know, it's, <laughs> you know, that led to gangsterism exactly. in, in America. So, you know, we've seen touches of this in, in uh, the American history and parts of the world right. history. I mean, you can look at with uh, uh, Russia, is doing Putin mm -hmm. and thugocracy, you know, what he's doing. And you can see things are happening in the past 10, 15, 20, 30 years from now. You know, what, what possibilities of the next, you know, world leader or dictator or organization could do. And, you know, if Woodrow Wilson and his ideas were with the League of Nations, oh my God, where would we be at right now? But that's sort of like your book. It talks right. about your book. Well, the, F the Federal Reserve, I, I have a company in here that mirrors the Federal Reserve. It's called uh, the, 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 it's a New World Order um, company, and it's based upon the Federal Reserve. So what happens is it starts lending money out to everyone and basically calls in the debts of all the nations across the world. And basically everyone's become so indebted to them, they can't do anything. So it, it takes over each cover country's sovereignty. So without a bullet being fired, it's taken over each country just by bringing them more and more into debt. And actually that's sort of what the Knights Templar was doing to the, the, the King of France years and years ago. He was so indebted to them. If, he would, if the Knights would have called in their loans, he, the, the country would have been the Knights. So what did he do on Friday the 13th? He killed them. So, but that's the Federal Reserve. We owe trillions trillions to the Federal Reserve, and there's nothing federal about it. That's a, that's a private banking organization. And we get more indebted to them. And how do banks make money? More and more money. So more that, more money. It, it, we're, we're the suckers that have to pay. We the people. Yeah, definitely. Uh, now, you know, there's a presidential election. Right. And, you know, you have uh, Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. You have uh, Donald Trump. And then you have the two. You have the Stein, and then you have the uh, libertarian president, uh, running for, uh, I can't think of his name right now. Yeah, I'm right. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, but you know, he's running uh, for president. Mm -hmm. He's a two-term uh, governor in New Mexico mm -hmm. over a Libertarian Party. People be mad at me, but, um, but what do you see uh, the political atmosphere that you have right now, right here in, in America? I think it's the, the most tense political atmosphere I've ever seen. You know, And what, what gets me is I feel as if a lot of people are uninformed. So I talk to a lot of my liberal or progressive friends, and I, I talk to them about what's going on with Hillary Clinton, her past, her policies, and they ask me, where did you get that information? I said, it's all, are, you, are you only listening to CNN in the morning? I said, you've got to ex expand your horizons. You've got to listen to other news stations. I, I, I work out looking at watching CNN every morning while I'll listen to Breitbart, too. So I think I think a lot and a lot of people vote based upon their heart, their gut. They're like, yeah, I, I feel like global warming's a problem, or I, I I believe that this issue is a big problem. Not looking at the whole picture, so they they're, they're they're looking at politics through like a little keyhole and not getting the big picture. I mean, you ask yourself, where will our country be in ten years if a Hillary Clinton comes in? We're going to be bankrupt. Just look at Venezuela. That's the same policy she wants to put in. And now, now they're trying to get manual uh, forced labor down there, and there's, there's, there's food lines out the door. And that, think of it, how prosperous that country was. Yeah. They socialized everything. Mm -hmm. Are we the next Venezuela? Uh, it's possible. It's, you know, one of the things is that uh, you, know, you talk about in your book, um, it's about the education. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have a school system, you know, we have 50% dropout rate, 60% dropout rate. We have a lot of our young youth that don't have the quality education, when, especially when they come out of high school. And so you're looking at a, a individuals that really don't understand what's really happening. You know, mm -hmm. the Facebook generation, you know, YouTube and Snapchat and all these different John things. Stewart generation. John Stewart, like John Stewart generation. Not, you're not getting real news, you're just getting right. comedic news. And so, you know, so in your book, A Hidden Reality, does that talk anything about, you know, the problem of that, that society that's coming up now. It when, does. Yeah. Because back in the 18th century, the goal of the Illuminati was to keep people in the dark. They wanted to give them petty information or hiding the real truths to themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of the philosophy I think some of the, some of the people now take. Let the people give them petty information. 
leave the real crux of the information for us. We'll control the media. We'll control the movies. We'll control the libraries. We'll control the newspapers. So give them what we want and let the people fight amongst the crumbs economically and intellectually which are left behind. And, you know, it's, it's terrible because, you know, we see a lot of the politics that are happening today. And when you talk to young people, you know, I'm not talking to college students, people are 21, 22, 23. Um, you ask, do they even know the congressmen? Do they know what's really happening behind the scenes in, in, in law and government? Mm -hmm. You know, they can't tell you. And, they can't. And it's, it's, it, it bothers me, I'm not sure it bothers you, that we have a, a younger generation that's uh, kind of like, you know, they don't care about politics. And so once you have a generation that don't care about politics, don't care about the social issues, then you have big government. Say, they take okay, over. We'll take over. We'll, we'll, we'll be okay. You know, we'll, we'll take over all your needs. We'll put you on welfare. We'll give everything you need. We'll feed you. We'll take care of you. We'll give you the best college education. You know, that socialist college education where the kids are getting now. And uh, it's terrible. You who know. And who pays for the education mm -hmm. for college? They want to make all college free. Only one third of the country goes to college, so the people who the two thirds who aren't going to college, which traditionally make less money, mm -hmm. will be paying for it. Yeah. So, you know, it, most people don't even know those numbers. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, I mean, everything sounds great when it's when it's free, but socialism works till it runs out of your money, mm -hmm. and that's and that's where you know, then we were with Venezuela, and that's what the hidden reality is, is trying to show you. Mm -hmm. We're at the mercy of the government. Mm -hmm. Whatever the government wants, if it's strong enough to give you anything. It's strong enough to take anything away just just like that. And that's that's the warning I'm trying to give in the hidden reality in which we see today. Now tell us, tell your audience, uh, where can you find a book at? You can get it on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Kobo. Just go right on the internet. You, you can even look up my name, Martino, and the hidden reality, and, and it'll come up. All right, thank you, Steve Martino. Hopefully you have it back again. You got another book coming out. Come, right? come, coming out. It's a third of the trilogy. What we have here is they're all standalone books. Mm -hmm. This one's a hidden reality. The ones that's coming out either at the end of this year or next year is called the final reality. And that goes into, expands upon everything I'm saying and really gives the biggest warnings yet of what direness is, could come to this country. All right. Well, well this is Daryl McKell Brooks of the On Fire Show. We'll be right back 